Kami, why aren't you shooting them? She doesn't have a bow. Seeking weapon. Why are you not... <laughs> why do you not have a bow? You're supposed to... Does the other one have one? Yes, these are garrisoned with bows. Why doesn't she have one? You idiot. Garrison the town centre. Oh, they're going to steal so much. <laughs> oh no, what did they take? Shoot them. She's, she's useless. Why hasn't she done that? Where is she? She's attacking. You're supposed to be in the tower. <laughs> Why are you out in the town centre, you idiot? You're supposed to be shooting them. They're getting away. Hello, people, and welcome back to episode three of Farthest Frontier. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, thanks so much for all the support on this series. I'm glad you guys are really enjoying watching our village go out here and exploring game mechanics together and having a good old laugh. It's, uh, it's a ton of fun, so I'm really happy to keep playing it and uh, to keep building up. So anyway, let's carry on. Uh, we have a, a trader on the way into town here, which is great news. But uh, I think we want to start working on our defences a little bit, because playing this game off camera, it's about this time we start to get raids and we only have one tower in here at the minute. So let's go ahead and get another one in. Yeah, let's go for walls and defences, or just defences rather. And uh, we don't really want them overlapping, so I guess here would be a good spot. Okay, wonderful. We'll build that and let's see what this trader has for us. Uh, so there is a trader that has a chance of bringing cows. This is not the one. Uh, this is Beldar the Peddler. What does he have for us? does have a lot of grain, but... Again, I'd rather be making that myself right now. We're okay for food, for the most part, I think. Yeah, he doesn't really have anything we want. Do we want to sell anything to him? We could sell him some stone. Why don't we transfer 200 stone into the trading post, and then we can hopefully get some money out of him that way. I bet either way we have someone who's ill. What's wrong with you? Yeah, you are bedridden. Why? What's wrong? Now, let's find out. She has... Scurvy. Okay, so she just needs to eat a carrot and then she'll be good. Uh, but I'd like to start doing a little bit of terraforming here as well. So let's start flattening out some of this terrain. Because uh, I want to start seeing if we can do some nice little bits of detailing today. Uh, using some of the different parks and stuff that we have to play with in this game. Uh, so I want to see if we can delete this road here too. Create a little bit of space for it. Let's delete that one also. And then we'll redraw that up so it connects in. Got a predator sighted. Are you okay? Where's this happening? Oh, our forager is being bitten by a wolf. Could be okay. Looks like his friends are coming to help him. You have to admire the balls of these villagers, right? The knifing wolves <laughs> in the face. It takes it takes some stones, doesn't it? All right, cool. So let's carry on expanding. Uh, I also want to start amending some of the road networks over here. Uh, again, just so we can be a little bit more efficient in the layout, because this part of town's going to grow out now. Um, I think it's just going to be a smart idea if we sort of prepare it a little bit better. Uh, some nice straight road frames in as well that can allow us to uh, hold some of the larger assets. So again, we'll bring this one right up to the top, over maximum size. Let's do it in two sections instead then. And then that should be okay there. We'll bring this one down. And then start mapping out some new stuff over this side. So we've got this worker camp here as well. Let's move your radius over this side. That should hopefully allow us to start clearing out some of these trees. And I've also realised we have a set exploration marker here as well. So we can just left click and then send some people out into the void. And then they'll go and see what's over there for us. So there's an opportunity to scavenge here as well, isn't there? Might as well do that. Let's go ahead and get some food production down. Get a forager shack. Uh, someone can come out here and forage some uh, eggs and berries for us. Wonderful. So we're making a loss at the minute. Um, just because of our construction and soldier training. So I think what I would also like to start to do is introduce some markets and decoration. Because in today's episode I would like to make some progress toward uh, tier 3. For which we need 25 homesteads. 125 people, that will just happen naturally. Uh, but for the homesteads to happen, if we have a look at our shelters, uh, they need to have a 30% desirability bonus. And we increase desirability with decoration and the detail options. Also some of the service assets will do that for us too. 
So let's go ahead and get another market down, because again, this increases desirability for everyone living here. So we'll have that there. Actually, no, we won't stop construction. What we will do instead, actually, is drop in a little bit of detail in here. So let's go for a decoration. Uh, we'll go for a medium plaza. Why don't we have this here? Seems like a good idea to me. And then for our amenities, we will grab a market, because these are going to keep making us money. And then we'll have that one there. Cool. So let's pop a game on three speed for a little bit. Have we experienced a storm? There's 22 fish to spoilage in the underground thing. So in the root cellar, we can actually make barrels, which will um, increase our spoilage reduction bonus. But until we get iron, um, we can't really do that. Oh, I forgot to trade. Oh, no. <laughs> no, can you come back, please? Transfer some stone. Oh, 10 raider size. Oh, we're being raided. Oh. Okay. Yes, we were expecting this. Kami, why aren't you shooting them? She doesn't have a bow. Seeking weapon. Why are you not... <laughs> why do you not have a bow? You're supposed to... Does the other one have one? Yes, these are garrisoned with bows. Why doesn't she have one? You idiot. Garrison the town centre. Oh, they're going to steal so much. <laughs> oh no, what did they take? Shoot them. She's, she's useless. Why hasn't she done that? Where is she? She's attacking. You're supposed to be in the tower. <laughs> Why are you out in the town centre, you idiot? You're supposed to be shooting them. They're getting away. Useless. Useless guards. Build is under attack. We are aware of that. Wow. So that was entirely pointless, wasn't it? Fantastic. How much did they get away with? They're not still shooting, right? You idiot, Kami. 50 years old and she went into the watchtower without a weapon. Why? <laughs> Why did you do that? Oh, they stole my gold as well. Did we get that back? Yeah, they shot them. And now she's going into her tower. Can we rename her? You're for useless. You idiot. That was 100% her fault. Can we annex her from the village? The village was raided. They stole 120 arrows, 29 shoes, and 11 bows. We killed seven of them, though. That is actually quite good, to be fair. Although Kami was, oh well, useless, I guess her name is now, was totally useless <laughs> in that defense of the village. Go and get yourself a bow. You should be in the tower shooting people. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why. They did destroy our gate, so we'll rebuild that. But thankfully they didn't lose too much. But that's really not good. We just did lose quite a lot of resources. Let's make sure that our uh, Fletcher building is going to replace those. Let's up their production rates a touch. And what's, they just want logs for that, don't they? Okay. So how are we doing for natural resources at the minute? We do need clay, uh, for which we're not making that much of. Our smokehouse worker died as well. We'll add a new worker in there then. And uh, our clay pit here. So we need tools to make this building work a little bit more effectively. And um, right now it's not the most effective, which is why we're very slowly digging clay out of the ground with our hands instead of a shovel. But we'll have to make do with what we've got so far. Okay, cool. So this space is cleared out now. Yes, they're building this road. This is grand. So I want to sort of start paying a little bit more attention into how we can detail some residential areas. So why don't we go ahead and grab uh, some decorations. We'll go for a large park. This is 500 gold to build, which is immense. So we'll have that there. And then let's go ahead and grab some cobblestone roads. And then we'll just bring a little cobble road frame around the back of this one here. That'd be quite nice. And let's go ahead and grab a wall. We'll do a little field stone wall, maybe. Draw in a few places. And then let's also do some trees. Let's go ahead for decorations. Oh, some oak trees. I don't think the trees give a desirability bonus to the area, but 
I don't think it can't really hurt, right? It's going to make it look quite nice. And then because this will be a super desirable area, because it's got the park here, let's make sure we get some more houses in too. Because again, we want these to start leveling up into uh, homesteads now. Which we should be able to do. Probably not this episode, but we'll, uh, we'll certainly try and get some in. Like I said, I have been playing this game off camera a little bit and uh, the homesteads are really nice. Can't really build on there though, that's going to be okay. Uh, let's go ahead and clear this bit of road actually. It's just sort of in my way now. And then can we place some more houses facing into this little park plaza? I think we can, and that should be alright. Then it actually looks like there's a cute little opportunity here to bring in uh, that pathway again. Uh, for which we might as well come straight back down on that angle. Cool. So let's keep looking at desirability. Again, we really want to get that up. So let's go for a medium garden, perhaps. We don't have the gold to pay for this right now, but uh, we will eventually. We'll at least get the project started. Okay, so food seems to be doing all right. Got 218 root vegetables. I think it's probably a good shout actually now to uh, expand this crop field out into some more fertile spaces over this side. And that slope too steep at that point. Okay then, so what we will do is actually flatten the terrain here. That should hopefully allow us to expand the farm a little bit further up. I did want to actually end up deleting this wall, I think, but I think we'll leave the Palisade wall in for right now, at least until we know what exactly it is we're expanding into. And I think we will actually just send out some uh, exploration markers into the void over this side. And then let's see what we uncovered over on the opposite side here. Anything good? There's some iron deposits over this side. Come and keep exploring. Uh, with those iron deposits, we will place down a resource mine. So we'll go for iron here. Only wants 15 planks to build. There we go. And it's within the radius of the iron deposits and then we'll also give them a temporary shelter as well because these things will allow them to uh, stay out here for longer predator sighted. Like the bear is attacking our forager shack. Is he inside it? Unable to work. Yes he is. Uh, okay let's relocate your search radius. Although is he scared? Where are you? Like he's about to run into the bear. So yeah, we really want to get these uh, marketplaces up. Let's prioritize this construction. Add some more workers into it. And because we're developing sort of more of like a, basically another sort of mini town center over this side now, I think we're going to add in another marketplace because we really want to start earning some more money. Uh, eight people. Um, yes, you can join. We have the capacity for you. Welcome on in. And then, how about here? With a little marketplace there, and again, just because these worker camps are a little bit in the way now. Do we want to move you, I wonder? How are we doing for protein? I feel like maybe we could do with another hunter's cabin as well. Make sure we leave the game on three speed. It's very tempting to keep playing this game slowly, but <laughs> we, we, we want to start making some progress. Right, we need our buildings to be beat. Okay, let's move the storage cart over to uh, this area of the town now because there's a lot of construction happening here. I'm going to save them running back into all the time. Okay, so food stores are low. So what I do want to actually do here is have a little look at the farming area because they're currently harvesting beans. So I think I'm a little more understanding of the farming now. So we'll have a little chat about it. So let's clear out these ones here. So each of the three rows, the one, two, and three here, are referring to the years. So we have a three-year crop cycle. And each of the crops that we can grow here have frost and uh, heat tolerance values to them. So at the start of the year, we want to be growing crops that are the least frost tolerant because they're not going to be suffering any frost, uh, such as beans. Uh, what else can we possibly get in here? Uh, leeks are super frost tolerant, they also impact our fertility, so we'll go for 
a big patch of leeks and then we want something that's very frost tolerant as we come into the winter cabbage would be great but it's not enough time to grow it carrots are also acceptable so carrots are not a good idea to grow in the summer because they have a 3 out of 10 heat tolerance value which is crap but they are very frost tolerant so they will survive being in the ground and then likewise we come into year 3 uh, we want something that has low heat tolerance uh, such as turnips that sounds good so we can also plant uh, clover which will replenish soil fertility in a field I think that would be quite good to do just as the year ends and it repeats its cycle again and then how about another section of maintenance and what the maintenance does for us it reduces the weed levels and also removes rocks from the field so we have 0% rockiness but we do have a lot of weeds which are affecting uh, our fertility if we have a little look here yeah so the weed level is actually reducing it by uh, 154 which is kind of bad so you definitely want to make sure that we're continually weeding and keeping our eye on what crops are being grown here same as well when we come to make wheat fields once we eventually get a windmill to start making bread so just something to keep our eye on so i think i'm slowly getting my head around the farm in here <laughs> it's certainly it's really interesting it's certainly not a criticism this is one of the better farming systems i've seen in these sort of settlement survival games uh, really cool. I'm a huge lover of the way they've done it. The whole kind of spoilage mechanic in the game really sort of adds to the challenge. It's uh, it's really fun. Okay, how are things going over here? Have we got our mine built yet? No, nope, hope it should be some people. Let's build these guys a road. Because otherwise they are sort of traversing uh, the wilderness. So we'll build a straight section and then just allow a little bit of freeform to come up. Okay, we should get them over there a little bit faster and eventually... In many episodes of time, our town will probably grow out this way and we can perhaps have a little bit of industry at the foot of this enormous iron mountain which is absolutely covered in iron deposits. Some sand down here as well. We might even want to get a sand pit going too. Because I'm guessing we're going to need that for glass. Yes, we do. Okay. Get a sand pit going there as well then. That's fine. But otherwise, resources are stocking up now. Our, our work camps are really keeping people going. Uh, which is good. Stricken with typhoid. Are you okay? Uh, ten people want to emigrate. Uh, yes, you can come in. You can come in, I think. Uh, so I'd like to start making some more resources that we can sell to the trader. Like soap and stuff. Because we don't really have stuff to sell like that at the minute so let's go ahead and grab a soap shop which again is a negative desirable building so we want to place this somewhere where the land buyer is already pretty crappy next to the compost heap seems pretty sensible to make soap right it's a uh, color is wet dream isn't it <laughs> it is so we have no fishing range are you sure there's fish here so i do believe that we can't actually overfish uh, and this is probably due to an issue with the fact that we have three fishing huts so close by together. So I think we're going to actually remove one of them. And then again, what I would like to do now is try and explore the edge of this lake just to see how much room we actually have to play with. So we'll set some more exploration markers here and hope that they don't get mauled by a bear. Okay, what was discovered over here? Some gold, lots of eggs. Always happy to see that. Pure berries as well. Lots and lots of berries out here. That's what it looks like. Are these little fruit trees? No, they're just berry bushes, aren't they? There is a building that will harvest fruit trees for us and keep them maintained. But I haven't seen a single fruit tree marker. I'm not entirely sure if the berry trees are the ones that are actually counted as fruit trees. I guess we'll have to build the building and find out together, won't we? Uh, I feel like spoil these four mushrooms. I don't really care about four mushrooms, right? That's not really an issue. Okay, we've got two storage carts really close together here. Let's bring another one up this way. And uh, yes, you can come over here as well. So these little parks and decorations here will slowly be built up over time. Uh, we can also spam some of the smaller ones too. So let's go into our decorations and perhaps grab uh, a small shrub. And maybe we can just get these... 
in a couple little places around here. Let's keep desirability high. Get one in there as well. Uh, maybe a few either side of the garden. So we want to get all these to uh, 30 desirability. We probably won't hit a level 3 town center today, I don't think. There you go, just saw her go into her tower. It's about bloody time, useless. She finally has a bow. About three weeks too late. Idiot. <laughs> I can't believe that. Okay, so our explorers are being eaten by wolves. That's okay. It's all in the name of exploration. So we do have some boar over here. Uh, but this might be a good shout out here for another hunter's shack, but it is a fair ways away from the town. But we'll go for it. Let's go ahead and bring a, a nice big straight road down this way. Are you okay if we come on a straight angle? There we go. Bring it around here. Okay, so we've got some boar. I don't know if these have any higher meat yield than the deer. It doesn't really specify if it does. But what we will do is drop in another production building because we're getting so many more immigrants now. And we really need to make sure that we can stay on top and feed them. So let's go ahead and throw in a little hunter's cabin. That should be good. So this is going to take five gold to build each, which is quite a lot actually. How are we doing for this one? It's only had a little bit taken out of it. We've also got another one in here as well. That these guys don't have stone in their work camp. Okay, let's move your radius then. Uh, come over here. Come and start... Clearing all this out. Had another predator sighted. Is this the explorers? Yes, it is. You know. <laughs> Outrunning wolves in the wilderness. God bless. It's all the nerve exploration. We'll make her a little statue or something. She's clearly dead. Alright. Oh, yes, we got our little stone wall in now. <laughs> How nice is that? Really, really enjoy detailing in this game. It's, uh... It's a lot of fun. We'll definitely uh, start doing more of it. Uh, so once that we're grading some of the main roads through town as well into cobble roads, because these are going to help our sims, or villages, sorry, uh, move around a little bit quicker. Let's go ahead and upgrade these two. There we go. Fantastic. Oh, wonderful. Look at all that. The villagers have come to illness. Matter died of typhoid. Matter. So this is what he's been up to after his contract at Spider United. Okay, well, rest in peace, Mata. Uh, one of the best uh, attacking midfielders uh, the Premier League has seen. Okay, but it's all pretty chill now. I definitely want to get this prioritised as well. Lots of markets. We need to keep uh, that income coming in. So we've got lots more people in the village. Yearly taxes have been collected. Yeah, so I really want another villager to come in. It's kind of what we're hanging around for now. And speak of the devil. <laughs> there is one of them. Wonderful. All right, so let's see what... Um, he has to sell. Food stocks are low. We're not losing vast amounts to spoilage. Uh, what's going on here? We lost a forager. Okay, maybe that's why food sources are dwindling. There's some greens you can forage in the field here, so... But again, a forager shack in the middle of the town. This probably isn't the best place for any more, is it? Why don't we relocate this building um, out into the wilds, and then we can send her out to gather these greens and berries over here. And then we can really expand our farm out here as well in a second once this land has been uh, tilled. Okay, wonderful. Let's see what's happening with the trader. Uh, the peddler is back again. It's not who we want. <laughs> we want um, a guy that sells the cows, but no dice. Uh, he does, however, want to buy uh, logs. So I'm going to transfer uh, 200 into the trading post. We're making a ton of logs these days thanks to the worker camps. So we'll sell him there. We can also sell him some soap as well uh, for quite a lot. So we're going to transfer 25 soap into the trading post as well. And then hopefully this will give us that big cash influx now to start finishing uh, all these areas over here, which will increase desirability, which is really good. Uh, I believe there's also some other buildings that increase desirability as well. Um, outside of the amenities, I know that the... The healer's house does. So we had a really uh, useful comment on episode 2. Uh, saying that the... Well, some of the buildings actually have an upkeep cost. Uh, which is detailed here. So the lookout tower has an upkeep cost of 8 gold a month. Um, but when you actually build it, it doesn't specify that. 
So that kind of needs to be added into the game because that can really knack your economy. It doesn't tell you how much it costs. Uh, the same with the healer's house as well. It would be nice to have a healer, but for right now we don't really need it. People are only getting a, a splash of typhoid, which is fine. All right. It's good for their immune systems. When it becomes a pandemic, that's when it becomes a problem, right? Cool. Let's do a little bit of trading here now. So, yes, let's sell all of these for 292 gold. Uh, hopefully my soap is on its way as well. That would be grand. Keep selling the wood. Uh, is there anything else here? Don't we want to sell shoes? People do need shoes. Is there anything we can buy from him as well? Yeah, we could buy flour. We also want a trader with heavy tools as well because that allows us to build the windmill. And I'm hoping that will really help stabilize our food production once we get grain in. But again, we're going to have to wait and see. We also have zero fruit as well. You know, there's a real, let's have a look at our villager professions here. There's a severe lack of workers. We definitely need more workers. Let's go up to 15. Or builders even. It's going to siphon it off of our laborers, but that's okay. Let's come into the worker camps. Uh, yeah, we don't need four in here. You guys are okay. And then how many are in this one? Two in there as well. One of them is sick there. Is she a typhoid person? No, she's got a broken bone. Um, how do you fix your broken bones? Unless treated by a healer. Again, we don't really want to buy a healer's house yet because they're expensive upkeep costs per month. So it looks like it's a bit of a bad time for her right now. But we'll, we'll just keep going. Hopefully she'll fit, sort herself out. Cool. So let's adjust the radius here. There's a ton of forager walls out this way, so please go start foraging some berries. That'd be wonderful. And let's quickly have a look at this food production building. So the Aberyst is a building that employs an Aberyst, funnily enough. Uh, and they will work at this building and maintain and harvest fruit trees nearby. Well, this is super fertile up here, isn't it? Okay, we can nearly get 100% there. It's going to take 25 clay to do, though. Okay. Okay, so we've got all this money now. Let's transfer the gold. Let's get this back into the global storage. There we go. 344 now. This should take out a big chunk of all these. Let's keep mapping out some road networks, too. Just had a, a 18 villagers graduate. That's really good. That means that they're going to be a lot more efficient in their jobs now. So foragers will forage more. Uh, hunters will bring out more pelt if they're educated more meat and stuff so uh, education is a wonderful thing for the village and it's not like cities either where we have to balance kind of a uneducated workforce against a highly educated one the more educated the better i think in this game cool so these guys out here are definitely going to want a temporary shelter just because they're so far from the residential areas that there's no point in them Sort of having to trek all the way back. They'll stay out here for longer and keep gathering us more food. Uh, it looks like this has been leveled out now. Can we expand the field again? Yeah, we can. So it's more fertile land over this side too. Do we really want to do another crop field here? I think we will. Uh, let's go for food production. And then can we fit this in? Yes, we can. Okay. I think we'll maybe make this a flax field, because we do have a weaver building in the village, if I remember correctly. It is somewhere. Uh, we have two soap shops, don't we? Yeah, I placed two by accident. Oh, it's okay. More soap's fine. Keep everyone clean. And then, let's also have a look at some more resource buildings. So, we haven't placed the handle shop either have we again which is something we can place in here but the candle shop does want beeswax which is produced by the apiary so when we come to place this we'll notice sort of these little golden markers so this is kind of the uh, honey bonus which is the game describes it which is hilarious to keep saying by the way honey bonus so, <laughs> i don't know maybe it's just me being stupid it sounds hilarious though uh, so yeah, we can place these around the gardens that we've placed in. Because of course, that's where the bees are. So we'll make some honey. 
and beeswax as well, which the candle makers will turn into uh, candles, of course. What else? All right. Wonderful. So these are going to start uh, maintaining all these berries for us now. And which I guess kind of replaces our forager shot, doesn't it? Because she's not maintaining them. She's only picking them. So I think I'm going to send you further afield so you're not interfering with the arborist. That seems like a sensible option, right? I think it does. Got a predator sighted. Where are you? There we go. Oh, she's finally shooting a wolf. Well done for doing your job, useless. Yeah, she killed something. Okay, we'll give her a rename then. She has, I guess, slightly redeemed herself. There we go. Slightly useless. Two birds have been born. Fantastic. Things are growing up now. Uh, so our hunter's cabin is also in the town as well now, isn't it? And I think, again, I'm just going to relocate you now because you're kind of in the way now. The village is growing out and we just need more space. So the hunter's cabin shouldn't really be there. Right, let's have a look at a little plaza. Got a little medium concrete number. Food stocks are low, but we should be okay. Though we are about to head into a winter though, that isn't great. Okay, I think maybe we want to build another uh, root cellar, just so we perhaps reduce the uh, rate of spoil that little bit more. Is it in food production? Yeah, we want the root cellar here. Again, just because it's going to be ideal for keeping that food stocked for a little bit longer. We've got one over here, at least stop it from spoiling so often. Okay, let's go for that then. Build another root cellar. Hopefully that slightly it brings our spore rate down a little bit. Very keen to see this park get built. <laughs> really want you know, a nice little park in here. Uh, have we had any shelters that are looking to upgrade to level 2 yet? They're very close. Yeah, once we've got all these parks and stuff built and paid for, we should be okay. But until then, uh, they are going to remain as shelters. Right, but our fields are growing out here now, so what we're doing is just planting carrots. Uh, let's have a look at season of progress. It can't, it can't be moved unless the plants are removed. Do you wish to remove them? No, we don't. Okay, so for so much of a turnip, let's add some sand, which increases our target soil bonus. Again, we really need to come into a maintenance period because that weed level is getting quite high. And then I think also, how much compost do we have? Jane has nearly collected all the compost, so we can again increase the fertility here. But again, it's all just a waiting game, isn't it? It's waiting for everyone to get ready. Got three more stone here. Are you bringing one stone at a time? <laughs> Is that the most effective way of doing that? Um, I guess we should really give these guys um, a storage cart. Um, I can upgrade the wall. Okay, we don't really want to do that yet, though, do we? Let's upgrade some more roads. Get everyone moving faster around this part of town. Uh, okay, so Hunter's Cabin. Yes, you do have deer within range. That Will the Hunter's Cabin get built? Yes, we've got one here. So he's currently hunting. There is boar within his radius, but... Items uh, produced in the last year, 50 meat. One power and two tallow. Okay, again, this is a guy that could possibly uh, do with another temporary shelter. There is one here, though. I guess he would come and stay here, right? Uh, same again with the sand pit people. Uh, they'll probably stay there rather than heading all the way back into town once they need a rest. I really like that mechanic, how you can build temporary shelters out in the more rural collection parts of your village. So they don't have to keep checking all the way back in. People are just dumping stone on the ground here. Do you want to like not do that? Just <laughs> spend all the time gathering resources, just throw it on the floor. What are you doing? Idiots. Okay, so let's add in another uh, wagon shop worker here. This probably is a good idea, actually. So it's a workshop where transport wagons are manufactured. Wagons can be used by villagers to quickly transport goods from one place to another. 
increasing the efficiency of building, farming, and resource harvesting. So that's probably something we want to do as well, isn't it? We only have one at the minute, so why don't we go ahead and build um, another one of those. I'm not entirely sure where they are, though. We did place one before, clearly, so... And we've already unlocked it. Was it storage, maybe? Yeah, the wagon shop's here. Okay. So why don't we... If we go, we're sort of forming like a new little main street here now. Let's add the wagon shop there. Again, I feel like we could possibly do with another market as well, you know. We're not really making that much money per month. The soldier training is incredibly expensive. Um, do we have two soldiers in this one? Yes, we do. Okay, we're going to remove you. That should hopefully bring our soldier training cost down a little bit. And four clay. It's not a great amount, is it? There are no uh, fruit-bearing trees within range of this avarice building. But I can actually tell you to plant trees, can't I? So this is really cool. We can almost make, I guess, like a little garden here, right? So we're going to plant some fruit trees. So there you go. We found that out together. We we don't uh, find fruit trees in the wild. Uh, we have to plant them ourselves. And then why don't we just give this like a little bit of decoration as well? Uh, maybe a little sort of... Oh, that one's a little bit too steep, isn't it? Uh, can we come around the side maybe? Mostly. Yeah, I think that's a bit alright. Bring this down this way and then again... Cool. So we'll have a little fence around our little... This is like an apple orchard now, right? Okay, so we did actually explore this lake edge, didn't we? So... Yeah, again, it's more incredibly awkward terrain to build an art this way. There is, however, another fishing hut. Which I think we could probably do with getting involved with. This guy will be fishing both spots now. Yeah, we've got more fields on the way. Keeping on top of the food is definitely the most important thing, I think. How's this field doing now for weed levels? Really intense, 85%. With that in mind, I'm going to cancel this crop and replace it with another maintenance period because that's like insane. 85% weedage is not good farming. But the field has got a lot bigger as well. Very nice. Okay. Our farmers here are uh, tilling the soil very quickly, actually. We do have a trader in. What do you have for us? Uh, so this is Aqua of the Iron Claw. Oh, she's selling us heavy tools. Very, very good. Yeah, she's selling us heavy tools. Okay, we need to buy some of those. And um, that is very good news indeed. So it's Aqua of the Iron Claw trader who will have a chance of stocking heavy tools. So we want to sell all this wood to her, which gives us 456. And then I can buy precisely one heavy tool from her. She's selling iron ore. Oh, she's also selling regular tools as well. So these are the ones that we can use in the clay pits and stuff. Allow us to work a little bit more effectively. Uh, she also wants to buy pottery as well. So I'm going to stock 50 pottery in the trading post. And then anything else? Now we're, we want to keep some wood. We've not got vast amounts of it left after selling some to the previous trader. And uh, yeah, she's selling that as well. Okay, so with the heavy tool now. Um, if my calculations and understanding of how this works are correct then we should be able to build the windmill which is going to allow us to turn uh, wheat into flour so I'm going to build a bit more there and again I have something in mind for this <laughs> I want to um, have some farmland that kind of envelops the uh, the windmill so we'll let that grow out and then we'll build it around it once it's ready uh, so if we have a look at some resources in storage uh, hopefully now yes we have one heavy tools so I also believe that heavy tools are also used in the um, upgrading of stuff like the saw pit yeah so it's upgrade cost it wants a heavy tool 50 bricks and 15 iron yeah, we're a tier away from being able to produce our own iron ingots and clay bricks. We need the tier 3 buildings for that. But at least, oh look at our little, our little orchard now. That's so nice. <laughs> That's so cool. 
Oh, I love that. It's supposed to be the fencing up around it too. That's really nice. Um, there's a fair bit of construction going on over this side of the town now. So, um, where are our storage carts? There's one here. There's one over there as well. Right, you just come over here so people don't have to make that massive trip every single time. And then the compost is also ready to be sprinkled here too. So let's go ahead and get this onto this field. And that gives us a new warning uh, that this field will be fertilized with compost next year. Uh, which will start on the turnip rotation. Fantastic. Okay, that's good news. Wonderful, but I'm hoping this is going to be a big game changer for us, being able to grow bread. Well, not grow bread, you know, grow wheat. Which we can't actually then turn into bread using the bakery. So it's going to turn flour and water into dough, which is then baked into bread. So this is actually a high desirable building. So why don't we add this onto our little market street here? Yeah, that's going to be good. So these guys are whinging of water. Yeah, let's not forget those basic necessities too. So we'll come into food production. Or resources rather. Yeah, and then we want to build a basic well here. So we'll have one on the corner. And then we can put it down by the water to get a water bonus. There's also a big water bonus over here actually, isn't there? So you guys might as well have one too. Uh, scurvy has returned. I think we're doing relatively well with the healthcare. Most people are fine. Food starts looking good. We've got a lot of root vegetables. I'm guessing this is from our uh, turnip farming, isn't it? So we can see now how we've just got so much more root veg because we planted turnips at the right time of year. Really cool farming mechanics. I, um, I really appreciate that. Adds a, another little layer of sort of complexity and micromanagement into the game. Helps keep you on your toes a little bit. Really quite fun. Uh, cool, so Anders Plains Wanderer is here, and he has cows as well. Oh wow, cows and heavy tools in one episode, that is fantastic. Although I have nothing to sell him. <laughs> so I can't get my cows, oh my god. How irritating. Yes, okay, so we could have bought cows from Anders. How long is he here for? Oh, he leaves in nine days. Okay, so having the cows come in from uh, Under Plains Rider... It's quite rare to us to have him have two. Um, although he's far above the average price. That's the most expensive I've seen cows at. 682 gold, so we probably wouldn't have bought them anyway. That's like really, really high. I've seen them sell for as low as like 400, so he's like way overcharging for those cows. Let's go ahead and get some more marketplaces in. Uh, if we can find an appropriate place to stock them. So, again, over here might be a good shout. And it is kind of overlapping, but I guess eventually we will have more sort of residential vibes at this side, won't we? So, I guess maybe over here. Go ahead and get another mark in. And we probably actually want to place down some more housing now. So, let's go ahead and get some more shelters into the town. Again, I want to save this for main buildings, so we'll leave them there for the time being. And yeah, let's place some houses in this row here. Crops ready for assignment. Wonderful. So how are we doing for our weaver building? We do have one around, don't we? Should be somewhere here. There we go. So they've produced... Nothing in the last year. Unable to work. Why? Because you have no flax. Okay. So in this field here, we're going to make a lot of flax for us. So flax is here. It has really high uh, heat tolerance. So it can never afford to be grown this time of year. We'll place in not a second crop of it. We will regenerate our fertility before growing some more flax in the start of year two and then doing some field maintenance and then at the start of year three we will do another batch of flax and then do some clover which is going to use to replenish the fertility in the field again again its weed level is immense in here we're going to add some more sand because that's going to give us a target soil bonus for the flax that's growing here. And I feel like we should 
remove that one and possibly replace it with more maintenance because these guys are going to be reducing weeds and rocks. This is a 13% rockiness area as well. Okay, so we've now got a dedicated flax field. Looks like our windmill is about to be done here as well. So very much taking this side of the village into farming. But how are we doing here? Okay, so these have planting months. I didn't even notice these. So September to October for apples. Okay, so maybe we should actually do some um, winter plants as well. Maybe a couple of pear trees behind. Would have been good to mix and match them, but that's really cool. We can definitely get these in the village as well. We can plant the uh, resource ourselves. Okay. This area is growing up now, isn't it? It really is. Slowly but surely starting to tip these off. I'm going to prioritise this construction. Add some more workers into it as well. But once we get a trader back in, uh, we can hopefully sell a bunch of our goods. And then at least get some money in. Yeah, because all the stuff we built over here is just waiting to be built. There is a lot of waiting in this game. And uh, you guys have said you're happy to sort of keep uh, the clips in of me sort of mooching around the village here. It's a very pretty game to look at, isn't it? First, we're going to turn off our UI. We've got our apiarists here now too. Harvesting some bees. Very pretty game. <laughs> very, very pretty. Yeah, really glad you guys are enjoying it as much as me. It's uh, It really is a ton of fun. Okay, so the windmill's in now. Um, he's going to want grain. And what we'll do in this field is we'll plant a ton of grain as well. Again, looking at the time of year that we can plant it. And then once we've got this in, uh, this should hopefully... Okay, so the heavy tool bar, or the heavy tools, also has a health bar. So it looks like we're going to need more than one of them. So we can eventually produce our own heavy tools once we have the blacksmith, but that's tier 3. So until then, we are going to have to rely on the trader. Which is fine. Um, logs are starting to dwindle a little bit now. So I'm going to add in another worker back into this work camp. And we probably should be okay with that, I think, for the time being. Villager has been stricken with worms. That's not good. Uh, worms are spread by close contact through bare feet. Ensure villagers have shoes, soap, clean water, and waste is removed from houses. Well, you should certainly have plenty of soap. Only 13, though. How is everyone's happiness? People are most pissed off with the food situation, which is fair enough. I can't really argue with them on that. Oh, the teacher died to scurvy. Oh, okay. New teacher in then. <laughs> Welcome in, she's gone now. Okay. Only had four people die so far, though. I don't think that's bad for, like, what is this now, year 10? I think that's pretty good. Yeah, the spoilage still isn't bad. Let's have a look here. So, yeah, this field's been maintained now, so we're not actually growing any crops here. Um, which might not actually be the wisest decision as we're coming into winter. Maybe we'll be one upon a really heavy frost-tolerant crop here. Is there anything else apart from turnips? Or peas? I feel like we're doing a lot of peas and a lot of turnips. <laughs> <laughs> That's why their entire diet is made up of it. Uh, how about a leek? Leeks are big boys. They take a long time to grow. But that's fine. This flax is growing here now as well. It's a late harvest for our clovers. Okay. The food situation it never gets so dire to the point that... Oh, here we go. He's housing the apples. But the village is getting really big now, isn't it? It's getting really big. Our crops are ready for assignment. To be assigned on a three-year rotation. So we definitely want this to be our wheat field. Again, we can have a look at wheat. It's super heat tolerant and pretty frost tolerant as well. Uh, so wheat produces grain that must be milled into flour. And then baked. Wheat has high food yields and grain can be stored longer than most crops. Uh, wheat requires fertile soil and disease can cause significant crop loss. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get that in. Uh, we will then do... Uh, so what can we do with rye? It's a cereal crop similar to wheat that yields grain, which is milled into flour. Okay, so we can do either or. What's the major difference between the two of them? It's also slightly more frost tolerant than wheat. Okay. 
after that first plant we'll do a uh, maintenance on it and then why don't we go for some of that rye then and then perhaps a frost tolerant crop like carrots and then back to more grain and then perhaps a growth of clover which can be used to replenish soil fertility cool so we really want the soil mixture to be friendly uh, to wheat here so that's what we'll go for and then that should hopefully start supplying our windmill firewood is low okay let's fix that let's come ahead and add in uh, some more firewood cutters and then we'll also expand our town at the back around here and then bring it down and there we go Wonderful. this is so close to being done <laughs> so very very close now hopefully leave the game on three speed and we'll get it done so we got our bakery here now so what is it you want you want flour which will come from the mill firewood and water so both of those are produced kind of passively but now with the the windmill in we should hopefully be getting ever so closer to that how are we doing here these guys are very nearly super desirable are you you're at a 28 percent bonus okay let's go ahead and get down uh, some more shrubs if we can find somewhere for them okay Oh, wonderful. Here's our little garden. How nice is that? <laughs> That's really cool. Some like geometric path designs in there too. Some little bushes. I mean, I'm fawning over my garden as my villagers die of scurvy behind me. But it's all about the detail, isn't it? Welcome to the channel, everyone. Okay, yeah, so we've got some big firewood problems here. Uh, let's have a look at our splitters two people in there we'll add one more person in here planks also look like they're about to dwindle how are you guys doing for resource collection out here uh, a villager to employ at work camp okay it actually looks like we're out of villagers here does it everyone is currently has a profession Okay, I guess we don't need it, right? We should be okay. We hope. <laughs> I think what we need to do um, is actually adjust. There's the hunter. God, he's not very good. Okay, so he doesn't always have a 100% success rate, does he? He does miss that day. Useless. Okay, so what's this? The hunters haven't found any game for a while at this one. Alright. Uh, come a little bit further out here. Uh, come see if you can find some more people over this side. Uh, firewood is really low as well. And that should be getting fixed fairly soon, hopefully. My game hunters are actually catching people here. There's a lot of deer over this side, actually. Uh, the hunter's cabin should be... Yeah, there's plenty of deer this side. Okay, has to be said, these are some of the most bold deer you've ever seen. Right, they're basically part of the population. <laughs> they're running around in the main town over here. Uh, new year number 10, fantastic. Into year 10 now, he's got another broken bone, that's okay. Okay, so our wheat is growing. Let's have a look on our current crop. So, rye. So, we're currently having minus... 1,000 in negative factors. The biggest chunk of that is coming from the fertility. So I think it might be worth building another compost yard because we've only got one compost person here at the minute. So there's another fishing hut out here. Again, food is becoming a problem. It's like easily the most sort of time consuming management aspect of this game is keeping food stocked. We'll build a work shack out here and we'll also get a road uh, coming down out this way as well. So I'm guessing the firewood being low is really affecting us, isn't it? Uh, we've got a trader, Bella the peddler is back. Okay, so he wants to sell his grain. We might need to actually buy some food off of him here. We can buy some flour. He also wants to buy a lot of this stone that we have in storage. 
Uh, although he doesn't have enough money to buy it all off of us, which is interesting. So we'll sell him that. That should be okay. And then, yeah, let's buy some flour from him too. Uh, how much here? How much do we have? We've got a good. Let's go for a nice round 200. And then we're going to buy and transfer that. Okay, and then we're going to transfer this gold out of the trading post. So that should give us some flour now. Uh, hopefully that's come in, has it? I guess it has to be transported out first, doesn't it? I believe that's how it works anyway. Maybe transfer a little bit more gold back in. Let's go for 300 in there. Hopefully it shouldn't be too long before it comes in. We'll have to be transported. Another trader's just turned up as well. Has it? Yes, it has. Who do we have? Uh, Iron Claw Lady is back. So he's selling it far below the price. Also the grain too. We might as well buy the flower, hadn't we? So can I buy... 85 grain from you? And then, what do we want to buy from... More heavy tools would be good, but she's selling it for really high prices. Is there anything she wants to buy from us? She's buying iron ore. We're not really using iron ore yet, but if we can keep a stockpile of that, but when we do eventually get the blacksmith, it should give us a nice backlog to get through. Oh, 330 for heavy tools. I don't really want to pay that. That's mega expensive. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll do enough trade in there. Okay, yes, this is really good. The flour has been delivered. That's firewood. I'm now baking bread. We've got 60 pieces of bread. 60 loaves, I guess, right? Very nice. So I'm really relying on bread and grains to be uh, a big winner for us. We hope so, anyway. So we lost 66 crops to frost. That's not too bad, I suppose. Fertility is 60% here. Okay. It's coming along though. Very happy that we've got the heavy tools in to sort uh, the windmill here. But she just wants that delivery of, of grain now, doesn't she? What we do want to do in anticipation of the grain is come into storage and actually build a granary. And um, because this will allow us to store grain for a lot longer. Rather than storing it in the warehouse. So again, all about reducing our spoilage rate. Uh, there's no stones within these guys' radiuses. That's absolutely fine. Um, come over here. Come start working on this shoreline. And then let's make sure that our hunter over here is successful. It looks like he's alright. Eight people want to join. Yes, welcome in everyone. It's definitely worth having a forage in hot hour, isn't it? There's a lot of forageables. Okay, he's hunting. There is apparently still boar around here, so... We'll leave him to it. But again, keep an eye on any warnings that pop up above his head, just in case. Uh, some wax on the floor. Hopefully someone will pick that up. Yes, here we go. We finally have some homesteads coming in. Yes, so now all these little plants and gardens have been built. And look at this. Yes, homesteads. Very, very nice. <laughs> very cool. Very, very cool, everyone. Cool. Let's move this store cart out of the way. Just please move. And then, uh, is there any other sort of buildings we want to build here now? Is there anything that increases desirability further? Or is it only really the bakery that sort of increases desirability out of these buildings? A lot of them are negative. But yeah, we can also get away with um, possibly a healer's house as well now. Because we have so much money. All these guys are super high desirability. Look at all of that. Very cool. So we can see the difference here right between a shelter and then the homesteads. They're starting to become a lot more official. Here's our medium garden. That's really cute. <laughs> I love that. I love building these little plazas. And we can do plenty more of these as well. These little designs with some detailing. Uh, we're looking forward to getting stuck in more of these designs. Okay, again, why everyone dies of blight behind us. 
but otherwise this episode is getting pretty long we do need to wrap it up but uh we've made some good progress today we finally have access to a windmill which is one of the uh, the better buildings and she is now actually grinding the wheat as well which is really good so we're uh, finally harvesting it from here the food is mostly maintaining we definitely need to find a more steady source um, outside of protein and possibly get some more vegetable farms going as well and um, just because we don't really have a lot of them do we yeah we want to go for greens we're really missing out on greens i think we've got a ton of root veg lots of mushrooms as well but it's coming it's growing let's see how far uh, we're, we are to tier three now so we've got the population count we just need um essentially 13 more homesteads to upgrade again which will come with desirability uh, and then it's paying the resource cost to uh, get to a tier three town center which then unlocks a lot of the uh, higher end stuff for us especially in uh, resources we can get breweries which means we can get the pub uh, furniture foundries blacksmiths uh, brickyards and glassmakers which would hopefully give us a much more impressive looking town and we can possibly start looking upgrading some of our uh, walls into stone as well uh, i think what we will do before we say our goodbyes is just throw in another defense tower here these guys are like super exposed on this side of the town there's nothing here protecting them so if we were to be raided from this direction um things would go tits up very quickly all right wonderful but we're gonna leave it there guys this video is getting way too long now but uh, yeah some good progress made today and uh, we're starting to get some homesteads in and looking at little detailing designs that we can get involved in, in this game uh, yeah thanks for all supporting it i'm really glad you're enjoying it uh, we're definitely going to keep this series going um, in between our usual cities videos and live streams and uh, yeah it's nice to have a new game to play on the channel and um thank you for supporting it because it allows me to keep playing it uh yeah thank you so much um yeah i'll speak to you all soon i'd like to thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day